thank you for another opportunity to gather around your word. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord, you are so gracious and you are so mighty. And we thank you, oh, Father God, for being Lord over our life. We thank you that we have risen today with all power in our spirit that you have given unto us. We thank you, Lord God, that you gave us breath in our body, the activities of our limbs. We thank you that we have an opportunity to represent you in the earth. And so, God, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor because your word is already blessed. And we decree now, Lord, that you will allow me to decrease, that you will use these lips of clay, use every part of my being for the Holy Spirit to begin to take complete control. Speak through me. Use me as your oracle. Use me as your voice. That, Lord God, whatever you have to share with your people, that, God, you will be the one speaking, that I would just be an instrument that you use to play me at your tomb. And so, Father, I thank you right now that you get the glory and you get the honor. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Well, let's go into the word this morning. I was kind of a little, I just, just just being frankly a little all over the place with what the Lord was dropping into my spirit. And I already kind of know why I've been feeling that way because we're in a place where uh, there's a lot of mixed emotions going on concerning the election and things like that. Uh, and, and, you know, you, it's always that way. You know, some people are mad because uh, their candidate didn't win. Some people are mad because their candidate did win. And by the way, this is not a message on the election of the presidency, none of that kind of things. Uh, but I'm going to really just talk about uh, really just what the Bible talks about as it relates to what the Lord dropped into my spirit. And it's right on the right page of our devotion, by the way, which is page number 357. If you have not gotten my 365-day devotional, you can get it on Amazon.com. You can also get it at TroyKingMinistries.com. And you can also get it uh, on bhclife.com. So you can get it on our website and you can also get it on amazon.com. It will definitely, definitely, definitely be a great, great blessing to your life. And so we're on page number 357. And as I woke up this morning, I didn't even really know, uh, uh, I was going to turn to this page cause I was just flowing and we're still in the season of being equipped. We're still talking about, um, really being equipped in the body of Christ, being, being equipped as it relates to uh, living our best life in Christ. And so I want you to begin to understand, even though there's a lot of mixed things going on, and you know, the first thing when I came on to set up my social media to come live, I'm seeing all types of things. And what I'm really seeing in the realm of the spirit is not even who the next president is. I, that's not what I'm seeing in the spirit. That was never my focus, never my uh, agenda when it comes to it, because I mean, in my opinion, it doesn't matter who is in the president seat. Jesus is the answer for the world today. And so uh, I was seeing a lot of things just fly across social media. And I know you're going to see it today uh, throughout the course of the day, but I want you to begin to understand something. Uh, what I have seen that many people are not talking about is the separation uh, that has taken place in the body of Christ. I've seen so many preachers, and this is why I teach the way I teach and I have a passion the way I have a passion, because we are uh, really just giving in to the pattern of the world. And what do I mean by giving in to the pattern of the world? I'm seeing so many people the, in the body of Christ uh, turning against one another. And I know a lot of times people don't like for us to talk like this. Uh, but I think it's time as prophets and preachers and uh, those that got that it is a prophetic voice to the world and to regions that we speak up and begin to share uh, what we are seeing in the realm of the spirit. And one of the things that I'm seeing as is, is that the enemy's plan has worked. And I'm not talking about uh, the presidency. I'm not talking about an individual here. I want, I want to take that back and let you guys know. Uh, what I'm talking about this morning has nothing to do with what is taking place now. There is a spirit that is behind every agenda. And, and the enemy will use whatever candidate, whatever side, whether it's Democrat, whether it's Republican, he'll use whatever side he can. Uh, to begin to push this agenda. And what I mean by that is many people miss the spirit uh, that has taken place behind the scenes. And you, I've, many of you have probably seen it, and I've been praying uh, that the body of Christ come together. And when the Lord showed me this in this in my devotional, uh, it kind of just really makes sense. And it's, there is a restoration that needs to take place in the body of Christ. And I said, Lord, I really don't want to talk about restoration today. What should I, why do I need to talk about restoration? And it wasn't until about 5.30 uh, this morning uh, that the Lord showed me why he wanted me to begin to talk about restoration this morning. And because what you have to understand is during this time of coming up until yesterday's election, uh, there were so many people that was literally slandering one another in the pulpit. And I'm talking about preachers against preachers because they did not believe in certain things. You had certain people going for different candidates. And there was a big division that was taking place in the body of Christ. And, and I just saw so much uh, bickering and biting uh, about, I don't care if you don't like me. 
and all these other kind of things. And I, and I did not see the love. And I'm just going to be honest with many of you this morning. Y'all know I speak from the hip of truth. Uh, and so I did not see the love. And, and, and it doesn't matter if you like Kamala. It doesn't matter if you like Trump. I still love you. Where's the love on both sides? And so this is the thing that I did not see. Uh, throughout the course of this particular time. And I saw really uh, the church world at its worst. And I'm, I'm, I, got, I just got to share with you what the Lord sh showed me, y'all. Uh, I saw the church world at its worst because I, I did not see the love of Christ. And I just saw really, I want it my way. And if I can't have it my way, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to slander everybody who is not against, or who is against me or who don't agree with me. Uh, and that is not the will of the Lord. That is not how Christ, or better yet, how we represent Christ uh, in the earth realm. And, and so I saw us fall so far away uh, from the pattern and the plan that God really has for our life. When we should be praying and should be uh, really loving on one another instead of coming against one another and battling one another. And, you know, I've seen all these debates, and that's one of the things that the Bible says, that we should not debate the word. And this is, again, why I just sit back, and I know some of y'all was probably saying, what is pastor going to say about this? Who is pastor going to say? And I told y'all since the beginning, I'm not going to say anything as it relates to that because God did not tell me to. Because the Bible tells us plainly, do not debate the word. And you have a lot of people that was debating the word based on which candidate they was going to vote for based on this. When half of the people that was debating those types of words don't even go to church. We're talking about a whole generation where church is about 20 people in size now across smaller congregations. And then on the higher end side of mega churches, they used to be getting the whole six. 600 to 1,000 people are down to 200 people who don't even sit continuously and sit and receive the word who want to have a say so when it comes to debating the word of God. You are not qualified, sir. You are not qualified, ma'am, because you have forsaken, number one, the, the mandate, which is what? Forsake not the assembly to study to show yourself approved. So how am I approved to discuss something that I have not been educated on and have not had any classroom time to begin to come against some and defend the faith. Come on, we got people defending the faith that don't even show up to class. That's a whole other message. And so to get me to the point where I am today, the Lord says we need to begin to bring forth a spirit of restoration. He says, and we need divine restoration to hit the earth. There's going to be a restoration that has to take place because I'm telling you, and I hate to say it, we're going to begin to see uh, the church world take another shift and another turn that it's not supposed to be turning in. Why? Because of feelings and because of emotions and because the enemy's agenda that nobody has ever begun to talk about. But we're talking about it today. And so I'm decreeing and declaring right now over all of you that are connected to this ministry, draw closer unto the Lord. And I promise you, I'm going to get to the point of the word where many of you are going to break free. Get close to God. This is the season. Ultimately, we got to draw near unto the Lord. Listen, we got to begin to get back to holiness. We got to get back to righteousness. We got to get back to the place where Jesus is the one that we have begun to select to rule our life. What did the Bible say? We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And so many of us have given up our kingdom residency for worldly manipulation. And this is not the thing that God wants us to do. And so we need to be in a place where the Lord really just spoke this to me this morning. He says, restoration needs to hit the body of Christ. People need to come back to the altar. People need to get back into the right standing of God. And I don't know how I'm going to do this, but the Lord has really just been, uh, when things like this happen, I get really emotional uh, when it comes to the things of the Lord because I just feel like a urgency and I see so much because God shows me certain things in the realm of the spirit and I want to see people people succeed. I want to see people make it. I want to see people uh, begin to live the life that Jesus Christ died on the cross to fulfill for us. And, and every day I'm seeing, uh, and I hate to say it like this, but it's like Jesus died in vain because I do not see the benefit of what he died and rose with all power being made manifest in the earth realm because we are rejecting what he done on the cross so that we can live a worldly life. And that's not, and, and we're limited uh, based on what we can do. We're limited based on our, our voice in the earth. We're limited based on having dominion. And that is not the, the life that God wants us to have. And so we're going to talk a little bit about this morning, uh, restoration. And I'm going I'm to read from the devotional first, but then I'm going to go into another scripture so you guys can, can, can really just wrap your mind around what the Lord is saying. And those of you that are here that's watching this morning, restoration is coming to your house. Let me say that for you this morning, because many of you have 
have been in a place where you uh, have, have never took your eyes and your focus off Christ. It's always been there. You've always been in that place when you say, Lord, whatever your will is for my life, I accept it. And so the Lord is about to cause great restoration to take place even in your personal life, even in your relationship with him, even in ministry. There's going to be a lot of things that's going to begin to take place as it relates to your life. In the scripture in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, reading out the New King James Version this morning, it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. This is Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. And this is what the, that, that needs to take place uh, with us in the body of Christ. He says, I will give you a new heart and put in you and put a new spirit within you. Many of us need a new heart. Half the reason why we need a new heart is because many of us, our heart has been broken too much. And because of our heart being broken so many times and damaged so many times, uh, we really don't trust the way we need to trust. We really don't love the way we need to love because we always think that somebody is out to get us. Somebody is out uh, to, to take us out. And yes, sometimes that may be the case. But Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 20 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And you know, I heard my wife, she did an awesome job teaching on yesterday. She, I, she gave me a little break so I could take my daughter uh, to her, her early morning practice. Uh, and so she said she would come on and y'all been missing her anyway. And she was talking about some of the things about God doing new things. And that's what I believe that the Lord is about to do. Uh, he's about to do something brand new in the body of Christ. He says, I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Thank you, Amy, for those thoughts. And so we got to understand what the Lord is doing. There is a transaction or a transition or transforming that is about to take place. And the Lord says, I'm going to begin to give you a new heart and a new spirit. I'm going to begin to cause you to not operate with a worldly heart. I'm going to cause you to operate in a place where your heart will be just like the heart of Christ. And this is what the Bible says here, not the Bible, the devotion says, Dear Heavenly Father, today I come before you with a heart full of anticipation and hope for your word, promises, restoration. And that's what I want to share with you all this morning, uh, that the Lord is promising you restoration. It seems like you're not going to begin to get out of the situation you're in, that your season is not going to change, but the Lord says, I am promising you restoration. Come on, and I want to decree this over your life today. The Lord is promising you restoration of finances. He's promising you restoration in your body. There's some of you that's watching me right now, you have went under attack the last 24 to 72 hours. And I'm hearing the Holy Spirit speak this to me. There was a great attack that came upon you. And you said, Lord, I don't know how much more I can take of this. I'm sick and tired of dealing with the same issues. And here's the thing. I'm talking to somebody you're going through because the enemy has attacked your family. And it seems like the weight is only on you. Who am I talking to? And I'm seeing a woman particularly that the Lord is showing unto me. And you're sitting there saying, Lord, I seem like I got to do this all by myself. And yes, you're in a relationship and not saying that your husband is bad, but it's like sometimes it makes you feel like that you're in that marriage by yourself because they're not helping you begin to do certain things as it relates to your children and they're not helping you do certain things as it relates to what needs to be done around the house and, and the, here's the thing the reality is uh, both of you are tired Come on, I'm going to help you here in a minute. Both of you are tired because there's things that he's dealing with that he hasn't shared with you. And there's things that you're dealing with that you haven't shared with him. And here's the thing. The enemy wants you to read each other's mind instead of communicating with one another and nipping that spirit in the bud and saying, you know what? The devil is not going to have any type of authority in my house. Today, I'm going to have peace in my house. Today, this child is not going to continue to get on my nerves and the weight that I have been carrying is not going to crush me because I'm talking to some people right now. You're watching me and you have been feeling like whatever is coming against you has been crushing you. Come on, can I get everybody to share? Because I feel the Holy Ghost coming here quickly. And it feels like you've been crushed by life. But I'm decreeing over you today that life will not crush you. Life will not abandon you. But this is the season where the Spirit of the Lord says, I see your cry. I've heard your cry. I've heard your whisper. And the Lord 
Lord attends to the cry of his people. And I'm telling you, you have cried out unto God. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm about to send you help. Things are not going to get complicated. Things are not going to continue to get hard. But the Lord is about to lighten your load. Can you go ahead and type that on the screen if I'm talking to you? If this thing is pricking your spirit this morning and decree and declare, the Lord is about to lighten my load. I'm not going to continue to carry burdens that don't even belong to me. I'm not going to continue to carry other people's dead weight. Come on, this is the season where you got to stop enabling people that should be more than able to do for themselves by now. I'm not telling you not to help people. I'm not telling you not to bless people. But what I am saying, this is not going to be another season of your life where you continue to allow the enemy to use people around you and people close to you to drain you of your energy. And that's why you have been tired. That's why you have been feeling the way that you have been feeling. And it seems like it's not enough time in a day to get what you got to get done. Why? Because there's so many things draining and pulling your energy. Your children, your son is pulling your energy. Your daughter is sucking your energy. Your spouse is pulling your energy. Your, your, uh, your, your job is pulling your energy. But today I decree and declare, come on, that the spirit of the living God is about to energize you and give you strength where you have been weak. And so I prophesy today, no more weakness. Come on, no more being in a place where you feel mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially drained. Help me, Holy Ghost, because I'm telling you this morning, the Lord says I'm about to restore in the midst of a chaotic generation, a generation that has turned their back on God. The Lord says those of you that have been in position and stayed on the wall of prayer, he says, I'm about to restore you in your weakness. Glory to God. The pressure is being removed from all off of your life. You will not continue to feel like you're doing everything yourself. The devil is a liar. And this is why you are starting to think thoughts that you should not be thinking. Why? Because you're looking at everything you have on your plate to do. You're looking at everything that you got to begin to do in your life. And you're saying, where is the help? If, why do I feel like there's so much on me? Everybody comes to me. Where's the people that's supposed to be holding up my arms? Where are the people that's supposed to be supporting me? Where are the people that's supposed to be helping me? Come on. And it feels like you don't have no help in your life. You don't have no help from the people around you. And can I just go ahead and bust, amen, the devil's head apart? It seemed like glad we ain't got this problem at Breakthrough Harvest Church, but whatever church you belong to, feel like you ain't getting no help from your ministry. Why? Because everybody is focused on the world instead of focusing on the heart. And I'm hearing the Lord say this morning, I'm getting ready to realign the focus and rebuild my altars. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody said restoration is coming to my house. It says, just as Ezekiel proclaimed, you declare that you will give me a new heart, a new, a new fresh, a fresh spirit. I trust in your unfailing love and believe that you are about to mend the broken pieces of my heart. Can I help somebody this morning? The Lord is about to mend the broken pieces of your heart. Some of you, your heart has been wounded for a long time. And I'm not just talking about by people. I'm talking about by disappointment. I'm talking about by circumstances. Your heart has taken a toll. And matter of fact, as I'm, as I'm speaking on the heart thing, the Lord is even showing me. Come on, y'all go ahead and share quickly. I just feel the Holy Ghost this morning. And I'm just going to flow right along with them. I, I didn't have to get to the scripture I wanted to read that I had in my, my notes from my Bible. Uh, as I'm talking about this heart, the Lord is showing me somebody. It's like your heart just palpitates every now and then. It's like, it's like you, sometimes you feel like there's a shortness of breath and your heart begins to like just speed and pump a little bit harder than it needs. And you like, and I've seen you, I just, I see you in a, in a room and like you just sat in a chair and you're like, Lord, I hope I ain't having no heart attack. And you like, Lord, this ain't me. I'm, I'm decreeing and declaring. Ain't not, I'm not having a heart, but literally in your mind, you was thinking about a heart attack. And if that's you, I'm telling you what the Lord is saying to you this morning, that spirit that it's came in to destroy your heart is being removed in Jesus' mighty name. Because I literally saw that right now. It's like your heart just, boom, boom, like my heart beating different. You put your hand there, and you're like, something don't feel right. 
and it's like you had like a little shortness of breath. And the first thing that came to your mind, Lord, I hope I'm not having a heart attack. The Lord is about to remove stress from you because that that you have dealt with concerning the palpitation of the heart, concerning the shortness of breath has been brought on by stress. Are you listening to me? But I hear the spirit of the Lord saying today, I'm removing the spirit of stress off of your life. And after this message, many of you gonna have to make a hard decision. And what do I mean? Telling people you need some help. Telling people that if you're going to be in my life, play your role in my life. What do I mean by play? I'm not talking about act like you're somebody you're not. I'm talking about do what you're supposed to do if you are assigned to my life. This is going to be not the, uh, the next season where you keep on carrying baggage by yourself. Are you listening to me? One thing I cannot stand, and people will know this if you ever had me come and preach for you or come in your city and see how I've been around me when I come in to preach. I cannot stand to see a woman carrying a bunch of bags. Are you listening to me? And I'm talking about this spiritually and naturally. Naturally, I sure can't stand it. But spiritually, I'm seeing many of you. Because, and why, why am I saying women in nature and gender? Because 90, uh, 75% of the church body is women in nature. Are you listening to me? And, and we live in a generation where spiritually, we let people carry baggage. And we don't have proper manners to say, let me help you carry that bag. Are you listening to me? And it, it almost happens every time I go preach. If, if there's a woman picking me up or a woman that's picking me and my wife up, whatever the case may be, and she's like, I'll get the bag. Because that's normally what you do is hospitality. I get it. And I say, no, I'm not letting you get this bag. I got it. Why? Because what type of man would I be to let a woman pick up a heavy, heavy, heavy bag and I got nothing in my hand? That is disrespectful. And that is not the heart of God to make somebody labor and be your slave when we're all supposed to be a slave to Christ. And I know plenty of preachers that do it. That's their own prerogative, but you ain't going to let Prophet King do it because I was raised right by my mother. Are you listening to me? I have proper table manners. I have proper etiquette when it comes to certain things. I still open the door. I teach my children that. When somebody's coming behind you, hold the door open. You ain't got to be in that much of a hurry. These are things that we have let go of because of pride and selfishness, but yet we decree and declare we're going to heaven. Yet we decree and declare that we serve a living God. And we wonder why Christianity, the kingdom of God, is the most mocked religion on the planet. Because we do not take it seriously. Are you with me this morning? And so Ezekiel is saying, I declare that in your word, you will give me a new heart, a fresh spirit. He says, I trust your unfailing love. Believe that you are about to mend the broken pieces of my heart. In times of hardship and pain. This is where many of you are. I find peace in knowing or find solace in knowing that you are the ultimate restorer. And so wherever you are in your life, you may be in a season of hardship. You may be in a season of pain, but you got to find trust and faith and solace in knowing that God is the ultimate restorer. No matter what you are going through in your life, God is going to restore you. Come on, decree and declare that over your life. In the hard times, even in pain, God is going to begin to restore you. Malta, Malta, you got a good one. She says, my husband still opens the door for me. That is right. You're supposed to do that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I commend any man that does that. You are, you, you're doing right. You was raised right. And that's an awesome way to be done. All right. Uh, and so in times of hardship, in times of pain, I find peace in knowing that you are the ultimate restorer. It says, as I walk through this journey of healing, I cling to the promise that you will restore or replace my heart of stone with a heart of flesh, one that beats with compassion. Here, I'm going somewhere with this. I need y'all to share this one more time. Invite somebody, share the link out, text it, because this is what the body of Christ needs to hear. Watch this. One that beats with compassion. This is what we need in the body of Christ. A new heart. This is what the Lord says, I'm giving you a new heart. Come on, not a heart of stone. Not a heart that's filled with pride. Not a heart that's filled with selfishness. But a heart that needs to be restored to the original intent of God that brings and feels and beats with what? Compassion, number one, which means you are more concerned and have compassion for those that are less fortunate, those that are poor. And that's why you got to understand what the devil is trying to do in the church. Well, 
about all this much. Y'all seen it on social media. The attack against the poor. Several preachers talking about the Bible says that you can't begin to bless the poor. No matter what context is in. Listen what it says. You got to have compassion. Where, why? Because the enemy wants to remove compassion out of the heart of believers. When you remove compassion from the believer, from the child of God, guess what you get? You get a heart of stone. You get a generation of people that are no longer concerned about what other people are going through. They're no longer concerned. In other words, you can be dying of thirst, dying of hunger, and they will not even help you. And we are seeing that in the world today. Many people will see you bleeding out on the street and drive by and say, oh, look at that. Take pictures. Do a video so that they can get viral videos on Facebook but never lend you a helping hand. Are you listening? Where's the compassion? He says we need a new heart. And it needs to be a heart, one that beats with compassion. Help me, Holy Ghost, this morning. I know some people ain't going to like what I'm teaching, but you're going to be all right. Hallelujah. We got to have a heart of compassion where we stand and say, you know what? I am concerned about the people close to me. I am concerned about those that God puts in my pathway that may need help, those that are less fortunate, those that need a word from the Lord, those that are going through a difficult season of their life. Not only one that beats with compassion, but beats with joy and a renewed purpose. And that's, this is what I love when it says a renewed purpose. Because a renewed purpose means whatever purpose you had before, your purpose has changed to a better version of what you had or what you desired. Because when you begin to walk in God's purpose, that renewed purpose that Christ has for you, and it's not that God doesn't want you to have a good life. It's not that God doesn't want you to flourish because he does. He wants to give you your heart's desire, but he also wants it to line up with his will. And it says, Lord, grant me the strength to release the burdens of the past. And this is what some of us need to do right here. Release the burdens of the past and embrace transformation. And so I decree and declare over all of you that are sharing, those of you that are inviting people to this live stream this morning. I decree and declare this morning that there's going to be a divine transformation that is about to take place in your life. And Lady Love, I decree and declare right now. Lady Love, I'm just seeing the Lord. Just show me your name there. And the Lord says, I'm about to bring this transformation into your life. There's been seasons of your life where you have literally feel like you have ran into a brick wall and it's like you have hit door after door, but nothing is changing. Nothing is opening for you. But I hear the Lord saying everything is about to change. There's about to be a transformation that is about to take place mentally, physically, financially, and spiritually for you. And in the next three days, the Lord says, as you begin to pray, as you begin to worship, he says, I'm going to begin to reveal unto you those things that you have prayed to the Lord in secret to do for you. This shall be a season and a week Week of divine release. God's going to begin to call some things to accelerate, Lady Love, quickly into your life. And as I'm speaking this to you, Lady Love, I'm seeing other people that need to grab this word because I'm not just prophesying to you, I'm prophesying through you. And so many of you need to come into agreement with what is being released over Lady Love's life because this is going to be a season where God accelerates the promise concerning you. Many of you have been in that season where you have hit the ceiling and you are saying, God, it seems like there's no more room for me to grow. There's no more room for me to expand. But the Lord says when you have ran out of room of expansion, he says, I will begin to knock down the walls, the walls of oppression, the walls of depression, the walls that have been in your way. And many of you have had obstacles and walls resurrected in front of you, resurrected beside you and behind you that have kept you from moving forward into your destiny. But I hear the Lord saying today, your praise and your desire shall begin to cause the walls to begin to crumble and fall. And you shall begin to experience in this next day says the spirit of the living God. You shall begin to experience the peace of God, the joy of God. Come on, the transformation power that God has for you. It's going to be available to you for those of you that believe. And I release that word to you all on this morning in the mighty name of Jesus.
Jesus. It says, Lord, release. Lord, grant me the strength to release the burdens of the past. I'm the king of the clan that your past will not dictate your future. Whatever that you have, uh, uh, have dealt with in your past, whatever things that have really uh, just been like a thorn in your flesh. Watch what he says. He says, grant me the strength to release the burdens of the past and embrace the transformation. See, many of us can't embrace what's to come because what has been. I'm going to say that again. Many of us cannot embrace what's about to come because of what has been. And the Lord says, I'm getting ready to cause you to begin to embrace the burdens of your past by releasing them and moving into the season where you can embrace the transformation that God is trying to bring into your life. This is the season you got to begin to accept the change. Things are getting ready to change quickly and things are getting ready to change wickedly. And I said that right. Quickly and wickedly. And you got to be in a place where you can begin to get a hold of what the word of the Lord is saying in this next season for you. He says, uh, you have in store for me, transformation that you have in store for me, help me to remain patient and steadfast as you work to restore the areas of my heart that need your touch. I hope somebody's receiving this word this morning. Lord, restore the areas of my heart that need to be touched. Thank you, Holy Spirit, this morning. And I just feel this. Many of you, your heart is being restored. Many of you, your heart is being restored. Can I just be truthful and transparent? I just feel the Holy Spirit shooting a lot of stuff into me like it's injecting me with venom this morning. Listen to me. There are some of you that you're going to be restored in your heart because of what happened to you, because of what you went through. He says, your work to restore the areas of my heart that need your touch. I'm re uh, Sister Glover, I'm reading page 357. This is from my Command Your Day 365-day daily devotional. I'll share with you where you can get it after I finish ministering the word or somebody can comment on your comment because I don't want to interrupt the word there, but that's what I'm reading uh, from the scripture out of my 365-day devotional. Restore the areas of my heart that need your touch. There's some areas in your heart, hear me, that have not healed. And I need you to listen to me real quick, real close, as you are sharing this with other people. There's some things that damage your heart that have remained halty in your heart for several years. And the Lord says today, I want to begin to restore your heart. I want to restore the wound of what your mother did to you at seven, what your father did to you at 13, what people in your family did to you secretly and you still ain't told nobody because they said, if you tell anybody what I did to you, I'm going to kill you. And that's stuck in your heart for 30 some years. So you remain quiet and said nothing while you were bleeding eternally from the wound of what they've done to you through that molestation, through that rape, through that hurt, and your heart has never healed from it. And this is why it's hard for you to begin to get in godly kingdom relationships. Why? Because every time someone touches you, it reminds you of what happened to you at 14. Help me somebody. Glory to God. But I'm decreeing and declaring that God is about to heal you from the wounds of your youth. God is about to heal you from that pain, that torture, that manipulation that has stuck with you for years. And some of you need to free yourself. Hear me today. Because I feel the Holy Spirit just speaking to me. All 720 of you that's watching me across all these platforms. You need to heal from that trauma. And you have not shared with many people about how it makes you feel. Because you feel like they don't understand what you are going through. And my wife spoke on it yesterday. There's some things in your house, some things that they gave you that you need to get rid of. Because why? It is a soul tie. And there's some of you that you're still holding on, revisiting. And I'm saying this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is showing me, and this is not just one person. But I'm seeing several people. 
you continually dream about the person that molested you, the person that took advantage of you. And sometimes you'll wake up in a sweat, taking deep breaths. The Lord's going to heal you today. Come on, if that's you, come on, wherever you are, I want you to lay your hands right now on your mind, on your spirit, on your body. Come on, just lay hands from your head to your chest and say, Lord, as Prophet King is speaking, I decree and declare I am healed from that trauma because it is a trauma, people. And I know many of us in church don't like to deal with mental trauma, mental drama. We like to cover it up and conceal it with something else. That's not going to help you. Because you can put a stinking piece of meat that doesn't rot it for three years under a mat and you still going to smell it. Are you listening to me? You can put it under the best, newest rub, but guess what? It's still eventually going to stink. And there's some of you, your past has you stinking because of what happened to you. The Lord says, I'm going to free you from it today. I'm going to restore the area of your heart that needs to be touched. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me finish reading this. I draw inspiration from your word, and I stand on the foundation of Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. May this promise resonate deeply within me, reminding me daily that you are faithful to complete the good work you have begun. Thank you, loving Father, for your, re your uh, relentless love and the assurance of a restored heart. Come on, this is out of the devotion this morning on page 357 and 358. And I decree and declare that God's going to restore your heart. And what I wanted to read this morning is a scripture many of you know. If you don't know the scripture, maybe it's your first time uh, being around the word. You haven't been around the word long. You don't know the Bible like that. But Joel chapter 2 verse 22 out of the New King James Version. Somebody can put this on the screen as I read it here. And as you share, it says, be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God. And this is what I was sharing as I first came on this morning. I know a lot of you don't get caught up in what social media is doing and siding with this war that is taking place to divide the body of Christ. Be glad then this morning, says the Lord, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Are you listening to me? No matter what the result was this morning, guess what? I'm not rejoicing because who's in the seat. I'm rejoicing because I'm rejoicing in the Lord, my God. Because it doesn't matter who takes the worldly seat. My, my God is still on the heavenly seat. And people, as long as my election official is still on the throne, on the seat, I'm going to be all right. Doesn't matter what laws get passed. Because why? I live by the jurisdiction and the governmental authority of heaven, not of this earth. Are you with me this morning? And so it says, rejoice in the Lord your God. He has begun, watch this, he has begun, uh, uh, he has given you the formal rain faithfully. And he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat and your vats will overflow with new wine and new oil. Come on, what did my wife say yesterday about that newness? I, was, I wanted her to go deeper in it. Uh, and, and, and she'll tell you, a lot of times, y'all, y'all don't know, she's as good as she is as I push her to be. I push my wife every single day. I said, listen, you need to do this, you need to do that. And she's like, I'm not in my word like you in. I said, and I have to drill her to get her to that place. And I get her to that place. And so I'll I be trying to push her to go deeper because she could have went a lot deeper when she was talking about the fragrance when you open a new bottle of oil. That's what the Lord says I'm doing in Joel chapter number two. He says, I'm going to refresh you. He says, there's going to be a vat that overflow with new wine and new oil. Come on, which means, what is that saying? There is going to be an aroma of newness that's about to come upon all of you that have been in position and in right standing with God. He says, so in verse number 25, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. Come on, many of you have years of hurt, years of pain, years of disappointment, years of frustration that the Lord says, I'm getting ready to restore. Go ahead and just tell somebody, God's about to give you something new. Go ahead and just type that on somebody's comment and tell them, get ready for your new season. Get ready for new in Jesus' name. 
Come on, there, there's a new aroma, a new scent that's about to be in your life. Glory to God. And he says, I will restore to you the years those swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts. Come on, whatever has been crawling, swarming your life. Come on, that thing that's, you know, when things swarm, it's overtaking you. Whatever's been overtaking you, whatever's been crawling in and out of your life, whatever has been consuming your life, whatever has been, uh, that's been making you feel like you're being chewed up and spit out. He says, and the chewing locusts, he says, my great army, which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and so in the midst of all the attacks in the midst of everything that has happened in your life the Lord says you're going to eat in plenty and you will be satisfied glory to God he says and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame can you go ahead and prophesy it over your life I'll never be put to shame in my life I'm never going to be embarrassed like this ever again. There are some of you, you've been financially embarrassed, but I decree and declare that you will never be financially embarrassed like this ever again. Somebody better receive that. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I am the, I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, and there is no other. And this is what you need to stand on. There is no other God than the God I serve. The government is not my God. My job is not my God. My business is not my God. My money is not my God. I have a living God. The Lord my God, the King of Israel. There is no other God. My people shall never be put to shame. He says it two times. Which means when you put God as the centerpiece of your life and draw back unto him. People, we have gotten away we have gotten away from God. We have pulled away from what we know is right. We've pulled away in love where we have talked about one another, belittled one another, called each other out of our names because we had different beliefs. The Lord says, then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. When we stand on Joel chapter 2, verse 27, the Lord says we will never be put to shame ever again. So what is the secret to never being ashamed in your life? Understanding and knowing that there is only one God. There is only one who is the author and the finisher of your faith. There is no other God before him. No other God like him. And I know people got their own gods. We've made idol gods. And that's a whole different teaching. Some people say, oh, well, I don't have no statue resurrected nowhere. That's not, no, some of us have made things a god. And you don't even know that you have made it a god. Because anything you put before him and willing to put before him, you have made a god over him. And this is why I don't have a problem when I need to stop what I'm doing and give God praise. Are you listening? And if you're not willing to stop doing something, pause in your day when God unctions you to talk to him, then that means you have put something before him. You know, it's almost like in like a relationship. Your husband, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, and they sitting there talking to you and you and you and you doing what? You're on your phone. And they say, Are you listening to me? Can you pay attention to me? Can you talk to me? And you're like, Yeah, in a minute. You are telling them your phone is more important than the conversation they want to have with you. So therefore, your phone is your first priority. And sometimes that's how God feels. And God says, you have made your, your device your God because you don't pray. When your phone rings, you will come out of prayer and see who called you. When you hear a text message, you come out of prayer in your mind and say, oh, I forgot to turn my, my phone, I forgot to turn my phone off. I forgot to put it on silent. I wonder who that could be calling me. And it worries you so bad. Come on, can, can we just tell the truth this morning? You have a left, because I've done it. Let me go ahead and free y'all. I'm a pastor. I'm God's prophet. I have done it. Let me set you free from the lie. Where I forgot to turn my phone on silent. And I'm sitting there in prayer and it bings. And I'm like, dang. I, in the middle of my prayer, I'm telling myself, dang, I forgot to turn my phone off. And then as I'm praying, my mind is wandering to the phone. 
saying, I wonder who's texting me at this time of morning. I wonder who's texting me. I wonder who's doing it. And after a while, I'm like, I'm not going to do God like this. Flesh, get out the way. Go see who it is and get yourself. Because why? At that point, God doesn't have my attention. And it is vain worship and vain prayer because my heart and my mind is no longer in it. It's on something else. And I cannot keep disrespecting him. Because when I do things like that, I'm making something else a God before him. And so many of us have created idol gods and don't even know it. It doesn't mean you got to have a statue. It's whatever you have put before him. And this is the life we live. And this is where we have to do better people. Where you say, you know what? That phone is not important. Whoever it is, you're going to wait. And sometimes you can't help the flesh from wandering. And this is why even in prayer, you have to be like, when your, when your mind starts going that way, you say, in the name of Jesus, every fleshly thought, I decree, whoever it is can wait. And I, and I start going into warfare. Demon, I, the, the, the Satan, whoever you have used, because that's what the enemy does. He know how to orchestrate things in the natural realm to get you all focused. I said, whatever, whoever you're trying to use. And then if you ever think about it, when you come out of prayer and you go and check it, what is it? You're like, Oh, this was some a scam message. This was somebody giving you 20% off at Polo Factory, whatever you signed up for. K and G, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever your shop store is, you signed up for, you're like, oh, it won't nothing. Or somebody texting you, hey, just seeing how you're doing. Then it won't nothing. Because why? It was a distraction that the enemy allowed to get you out of prayer. And this is what we got to begin to say, oh, and say that I'm not going to let you distract me. I'm not going to let you do this. I'm going to horn in and get back on God. And I have to get that phone out of my spirit and then pray. And oftentimes when that happened, I spent longer times in prayer. Why? Because I realized the enemy was trying to keep me from something. And this is what we need to understand. We got to be stop. We got to stop being so geared to the world. And we got to be more spiritual. We got to draw closer to God. Hallelujah. We got to draw closer to him. Let's not give it to go. I'm way over time. Let me give you the opportunity, those of you that's watching this morning, if you're watching for the first time first and you enjoyed this message, you enjoyed the word, you felt like something was said that grew you, I want you to go ahead and follow the page you're watching on. Make sure you follow the right page. There are so many scammers out there. Uh, one of our spiritual sons, Kerry, sent me another scam of Troy King Love something. What was the name of that uh, page? It just came up. Let me see if I can find it. He texted me yesterday uh, so you guys can be aware of it. Let me pull it up on my phone. Uh, yeah, it was called Tro Pastor Troy King Love Ministries. All right, that is a scammer page, and this scammer has gotten smart because uh, Carrie went and found out they actually went and bought some followers because I don't know if you guys know you can buy followers. So evidently they've been watching me and saying, watch your followers. And so they went and bought 454,000 followers. But if you go to their page, there's no posts, there's no reactions on there. And so we know that they bought those followers. Uh, and so people, people are trying to scam every single day. And so please make sure that you are following the right page, the page you are watching on right now. Go ahead and follow this page. Uh, and I only have one public figure page on every platform. And so make sure you vet which page is which page. I always say I've never inboxed you. Uh, giving you a prophetic word. I will never send you a friend request. I will never ask you to help uh, buy some oil. I'll never ask you to do an orphanage. None of those things. I don't do those types of things. And so uh, everybody's saying I saw that page. Y'all just blocked it because at this time, I don't even go back to Facebook. Don't do nothing about it. That's because I know it's demonic. The enemy like demonic stuff. And he, he, that's, it funds his agenda. So I don't even worry about it no more. Uh, but we have to be wise. And that's why you have to know the voice of who you are connected to and so i pray that you guys follow the right page and know again don't send nobody any money uh that asks you for money because number one I, we only have one or two ways to give we're simplifying our ways to give for that reason because i would never tell you to message me on whatsapp i would never we don't use cash app no more uh we don't do western union unless in, you know you have called our church and you are in a different country and you want to be a blessing to our ministry that is the only case i think this only happened like once or twice 
uh, how can I request anointing oil? Go to our website if you want anointing oil. Uh, Shante Carter. Can somebody uh, comment on Shante Carter and give her the website? It's bhclife.com. bhclife.com. Again, that's bhclife.com. Uh, you can go to our website and get the oil from there. Just click on the store icon and you can get oil from there. You can also get the book. For those of you that's asking about the book, you can get it on the website as well. Uh, but let me go ahead and open this up and give you guys the opportunity to give your life to Christ. If you are watching me today and you say, today, I want to make 100% sure that I'm going to heaven. I want you to type the word me on the screen. If you're watching today and you say, I need to make 100% sure that my soul has been anchored in Jesus Christ. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be ashamed. But those of you that's watching me today, I want you to go ahead and type the word me on the screen. If you say today, this message has changed my life and I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Go ahead and type the word me on the screen and pray this very simple prayer with me. Repeat after me right now and say, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. Today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that your son Jesus died for my sins. And I believe that he was resurrected with all power in his hands. And so today, I open the door to my heart to you and I ask you to come into my life, come into my heart, come into my soul and save me today. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. And